Um, good evening once again, uh, viewers. Um, this um, welcome, uh, a warm welcome from Sri Lanka Institute of Marketing, uh, the National Institute of Marketing, which uh, is uh, taking the mission forward to drive the Sri Lankan economic prosperity. Um, in line with this, uh, we have been doing this uh, series of webinar. Uh, we started off uh, last week. It's an experience sharing forum. It's called ESF. Uh, all of you know this. We've been doing some great uh, conversations around this topic. And um, given uh, the today's context, uh, here we are again. We want to discuss a few concerns, um, perspectives about strategic marketing and resilience, uh, especially in a volatile business environment. To uh, So this is the second of this uh, event series. And um, to get things started, I would like to uh, warmly welcome uh, the um, pre Vice President of uh, Sri Lanka Institute of Marketing, uh, Mr. Gayan Pereira, uh, to uh, get, uh, you know address the gathering uh, with his welcome note. Gayan, uh, it's over to you. Thank you, Arif. Uh, good evening, everyone, my dear, our dear members. So uh, welcome again with another ESF. So as you all know that uh, ESF is a key program uh, in the membership division uh, activity calendar. And we as the Institute or as the Exco of SLIM, we ensure that we conduct ESF programs to our membership on a frequent basis uh, and on uh, timely topics, so which will definitely help our members to uh, ascertain uh, knowledge and uh, exposure to these areas and to get themselves updated. So we all know that uh, learning is a never ending process and I think uh, so allocating this time or investing your time from your busy schedules, I think uh, it's worthwhile. So without spending much time, I think we have an expert with us, uh, a knowledge wealthy person with us, Rajiv uh, from Brandix, a business leader. And I'm sure the, he's an ideal personality to speak about this topic, strategic marketing and resilience in a volatile business environment. So Rajiv is coming from the apparel sector. We all know that with the current uh, economic crisis, uh, apparel sector plays a greater role in bringing uh, forex to the country. So I'm sure uh, the challenges the industry faces, the challenges the, com the company faces, and what they are going to do, and how they are sustaining themselves and being resilient, I think that case study, you would want to hear from him. So with that note, uh, I hope everyone, all our members who are attending will gain good knowledge. And you can always post any question for him through the q and I mean, I'm sure he will uh, share as much as possible with his knowledge. So with that note, thank you, Rajiv. Once again, sorry, I forgot to mention at the beginning for taking your valuable time off and uh, to be with the spend this time to be with our membership to upgrade their knowledge. So thank you for that uh, efforts. So we really appreciate that. So with that note, I would like to uh, uh, I would like to hand over to Aruz to give the description his profile and then carry on. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, uh, Gayan. Uh, that's Gayan Perra, the Vice President of Sri Lanka Institute of Marketing, um, addressing uh, the gathering, uh, the viewers. So yeah, um, I think um, he spoke about uh, the topic, and uh, it's my responsibility to introduce the speaker today. Um, he is a CEO, Director of Brandix Apparel Solutions uh, Limited, uh, and he is a Strategic Business Division, uh, heading the Strategic Business Division of uh, the Brandix Group. Um, he's a versatile leader with over 20 years of experience in the apparel industry with an entrepreneurship view to managing business units to long term value creation. Yes, you know, uh, the long term value creation is a very, very important aspect, especially in today's context. I'm sure he's going to talk us through a lot about this. Now, he has been doing this through building and leading high performance teams uh, and also enabling an integrated sourcing model for optimizing retail client 
supply management while leveraging innovation and embracing business transformation to ensure sustainable growth aligned to stakeholder expectations. All of these are very important uh, to the topic that we're going to discuss. You know, he's also uh, being a member of Brandix Group leadership team. Uh, his primary responsible is for the sales, marketing, supply of apparel products and business solutions to leading global brands and also managing the group's laundry and uh, intimate division and the largest um, customer uh, while co-leading new custom incubations, including multiple e-commerce brands in the US and the EU. Uh, he is a trusted mentor and advocate uh, in furthering social compliance for shared interest and in harnessing the diverse potential of all associates um, to unlock their potential in career enhancement opportunities while inculcating a culture of empowered leadership and gender equality in senior leadership positions across the group. Um, so he is uh, He's, he's a well-known figure in the industry. He's, he's, he's nationally known for his uh, ambitious um, you know, initiatives across the industry. So without further ado, uh, Rajiv Malasekara, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the Chief Executive Officer of Brandix Apparel Solutions Limited. Uh, Rajiv, uh, we warmly welcome you to the program and looking forward to hear some insightful conversations from you. Over to you, Rajiv. Thanks, Arus. Hopefully I'm audible. Yes, you are, Ajay. Okay. Quite clear. Thank you very much. And I think I have to thank Nuan, although he's not here for managing to convince me just to come and, uh, you know, talk to the valued members of the Sri Lanka Institute of Marketing and Gayan also for the introduction. Um, so, look, I think um, this is the topic was very much relevant on so many fronts. I, I wouldn't even know where to start. But we didn't want to run through multiple, you know, slides and presentations to tell you how bad the level of economic uncertainty is. I think globally we know how bad it is. I think coming out of the pandemic, uh, let me give you some examples. Now, if you take the U.S., uh, most households were given a stimulus check by the U.S. government, and in a country where the trading currency is the dollar. Uh, in the period of 2000, March 2020 till almost uh, January of 2022, most households were given a stimulus check. Small businesses were given payroll protection um, and so on and so forth. So in, 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 in such a context, we might have, uh, you know, lived in somewhat of a little bit of a not what is, let's say, reality because in that market where disposable income was inflated by what was paid by the government, uh, there was retail spending uh, that was not actually accounted for what that inflationary adjustment and real term trading and market parity should be. Um, so, for example, even in the US, a person today is, who is earning a salary of, let's say, close to $60,000 a year uh, in today's market for essential food and other items is considered, you know, in the lower class and could be struggling to manage uh, their, let's call it financial commitments and uh, education and personal other commitments, etc. So the economic uncertainty has extended now uh, across the US into Europe. Um, we know that even in the UK, uh, and in Europe, I mean, the UK, we know that the food inflation there has also gone up last week above 10 percent and they expect the energy prices to be up above 45 percent. And um, people not only is it scarce, are also looking at uh, alternative options to manage it. So it's not I think this in Sri Lanka, the problem is amplified because of of so many reasons uh, which we, I think, as Sri Lankans living here, are well aware uh, the reasons why our citizens and fellow brothers and sisters are on the streets uh, trying to have some level of normalcy in our lives. Uh, but this problem, as an exporter, uh, the challenges we are facing and what I will talk a little bit about today are, are now more significant than ever because with the lack of uh, tourism into the country and the critical need to draw 
foreign exchange in it is primarily dependent on the apparel industry to to lean on our key markets and our customers to be able to you know continue those relationships uh, sustainably but also with some sense of value uh, because when there is economic uncertainty and especially the period we are in now we know everybody is looking for value if you know even 2 3 days ago uh, it was announced that walmart in the us uh, a massive retailer of everything from clothing to food to you know almost every item that could be bought uh, across uh, their entire retail offer uh, had an earnings forecast which dropped the us stock market i, I believe by a couple of points um, so similarly this sort of will reverberate throughout the supply chains of the world um, and we now need to figure out a way uh, how to there look there is no answer as to saying that uh, there will be you know answers that will make life or bring life back to normal whether you are a business a small business or a large exporter uh, because with what's happening we will continue to face these consequences for some time but Uh, just on the topic that we are talking about today i think you know going back to 2003 until 2003 uh, under the multi fiber agreement uh, for example in the us you were guaranteed an allocation of orders that would then be for export from countries whether you were sri lanka or india or whatever under that us customs or what we call an hs category code whether it was uh, trousers or basic essential underwear or certain clothing items until 2003 we were all countries were guaranteed a, a quota that they could supply into the us and um, the key test was going to be subsequent to that quota being or that multi fiber agreement with the world trade organization going away how can sri lanka remain competitive now uh, today if you take the apparel market we know for example bangladesh uh, is above 25 billion dollars in export in apparel uh, vietnam is close to 20 uh, you know sri lanka we are targeting 5 billion and you know we've done quite well especially in the last 1 uh, and a half years despite so many challenges through the pandemic and especially uh, with disruptions to our day to day operations with things that are going on with the lack of essential items needed to run our operations but if we talk 2003 to say 2022 and we keep the pandemic period out for some time the idea was to look at what is that value chain enhancement that we can create what what is going to be different about us we don't want to be in traditional commodity apparel right commodity products i mean there are so many parallels you take a brand like dilma and there's always if you read uh, what would why why would Dil, dilma never dilute their brand uh, to be selling at premium and to create value right uh, so sri lanka uh, i believe sri lanka there may be three or four companies uh, that in some cases and i know at least two large retailers in the us two of the largest specialty retailers in the us about 70 to 80% so that's over two thirds of their product was bought from three or four sri lankan companies so two or three sri lankan companies were supplying 70 80% of their global supply so so why is that right so i think the idea was to see at that point whether you know people who were coming out of marketing and whether you had your education um, your ability to inspire and to as we say you know inspire within the organization and, and enhance that value chain to say what's different about your company and what's different about our country so i think we are proud no matter which company we work for that at sri lanka uh, through all of this and to some of the the best brands in the world we've had a large share of that and that's because why we've been able to create value through communicating Uh, ideas the for example no brand wants to sit on inventory for too long so we figure out between a digital value chain how do we create 
demand planning integrated with our system. So between what's selling now we are a B2B, right? So as a business to business, we don't always have access to point of sale information except now because now we supply a company like Amazon and if you supply Amazon, uh, you can go and see whether based on your reviews, if you are a four star, you know your product line will continue. If you are three, probably not. So we are that that sort of line between what was B2B, B2C and getting data at retail uh, is now more readily available. Analytics are very, very smart and can give us all of that information. So Sri Lanka has worked on a value proposition which is around building verticality, not just in the supply chain, verticality using our digital knowledge and capabilities, using our literacy and communications to be able to uh, give solutions, whether they are product solutions, demand planning solutions, inventory management solutions. Um, in a small island, we don't ideally have enough of supply chain. By supply chain, I mean we don't have the fabric mills that China has. We don't have the population that Bangladesh has. Uh, we won't have the scale. So when you don't have the scale, you look to take your, your FOB or your product price and see how do you elevate it to a higher level which then generates revenue at a premium for us right so where the marketing comes in whether it was led through an entrepreneurial vision uh, an, an entrepreneur can create an idea but it is through strategic marketing and people that are you know constantly researching generating ideas to see how do we support if i think i'm supporting my client who's the retailer, sometimes the win may not be as you know great as thinking about the consumer, right? So, for example, you might have a consumer that says, "Hey, I'm not going to pay uh, $60 for this pair of jeans." But what's different about that pair of jeans? Now, how do we create an idea where you can stay on trend for a fashion product, right? And the customer doesn't today. To, to ship goods from Sri Lanka to the US, it'll take the current uh, logistics time is about 55 to 60 days. Now, uh, nobody wants to sit on product that they thought is going to sell in in March. And when the goods come somewhere, sometimes by the time you've developed the product, got the material, uh, done your production and send all of this six months later, it, in, it ain't going to sell. So the strategies you will look at a more uh, flexible supply chain where you partner on some of the commitments with the customer. So being vertical, bringing the supply chain to be closer to manufacturing is one. Secondly, even as Sri Lankan companies, we still have to have a global mindset, not only thinking the consumer, but we also have representation in other countries that we can supply from. So uh, to all of you that are in the Sri Lankan city of marketing, regardless of whether you are in export or in the in the FMCG or whatever industry, uh, I would say that mindset of being consumer centric is absolutely essential because that helped uh, the apparel industry also in Sri Lanka and companies like Bandix uh, uh, to be successful. Um, our mantra, as you know, is inspired solution. So these days we have to really think about every possible solution. I mean, uh, we can sell cheap, uh, that's all, always an option, uh, but remembering the inflation adjustment that we've had to make in Sri Lanka to support our uh, associates, their salaries and uh, for their well-being, uh, we also have to understand that even though we should be more competitive with a devaluing Sri Lankan rupee, our input and our operating costs are much higher. For example, we supply, uh, we provide meals, we provide transport, we need a petroleum to run our factory. So all of this costs a lot of money. So we have to uh, understand that, look, if we didn't have a, a petroleum shortage and we didn't have almost hyperinflation, this would be a brilliant time for exporters to make money. But the constraints are massive. So in the short term, how do we supply from one of our other locations and bring that revenue in, right? So how do we also support our supply chain partners who are in Sri Lanka that support the apparel industry. So uh, different, different ideas, but uh, uh, you know, I don't want to talk too much about 
what Brandix as a company has done, but I would rather uh, leave it. Maybe Arus, if you have any questions, you can always interrupt me. But value creation is dependent on the marketing fraternity in any organization and uh, sales versus marketing. There is, it's a combination of both, right? Are we selling? Are we marketing? Can, are we converting that sale uh, at the right price so that we know that it covers our costs and also sustainably helps us survive in the long term? So these are some of the things we are facing at the moment. So I'll take a pause there, Aruz, if you want to chip in on any. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Rajiv, I think uh, it's an interesting uh, opening that you took in to kind of uh, just highlighting the fact that it's not just Sri Lanka, but also across the world, things are not looking that great, right? I think uh, this is a mindset that we need to understand going forward. Uh, globally, things are going to be challenging. And and I think uh, on that uh, element where you spoke about, uh, I just want to ask or I mean, try to get a little bit more insights into uh, when when things are difficult, uh, even it's it's difficult whether it's in Sri Lanka or for US or Europe. I mean, the, it impacts the same way that the consumer thinking, the dynamics, the purchase behavior, everything gets impacted the same way. Just like it's impacting in Sri Lanka, it's going to be the same in the US and the UK and the Europe. Now, how do you? But I know looking at last year to now, uh, the performance of the apparel industry by and large driven by uh, the likes of Brandix. Um, now, how do you keep uh, engaging? How do you keep in ensuring that your customers in those markets who are also affected with the whole uh, inflation and, and the pandemic, how do you keep engaging them? How do you keep ensuring that they are continue to grow with you? What What, what is the real, you, you spoke about a solution man, um, centric as a mantra, but, but can we go in a little bit of details? What really you do to kind of keep that momentum? Uh, in in a progressive uh, upward trend. No, I think look, uh, the pandemic also taught us that uh, we should we should understand the new normal, right? So we thought visiting clients meant sitting with them, you know, engaging with them socially, understanding what business uh, is going to look like. And you did this conversation and came back and built a business plan how to supply for a period of time. But yeah, in the new in the new world. We can engage through platforms like this virtually. So you can engage more, more, more diligently. Yes, I think the in-person meetings to manage relationships still matter. But for business planning and demand planning, what we do more of is try and understand what are the analytics around their business. Because, for example, if they tell us, look, we are finding a particular product is not selling in a particular retailer now. In the US, for example, they segment their retail. Now you will sell at high margin retailers. You have mass retailers, you Walmart, Targets, all of that. Now they have different product and value proposition or price points for each of these consumers in this market. So we will try to work with them to understand at that price point, what is that consumer want? Now, for example, a, a, a customer that wants a basic active lounge product or a basic uh, essential, you know, daily underwear kind of a product, they may not be so interested in color. They are more interested in comfort and function. So we will take that and we will work with our product development marketing team and say, who are the supply chain partners that can give us product that is, you know, gives you more stretch, which is, you know, gives you the fit, the comfort and the durability, for example. Then we see a new group of customers and new brands coming up where they are totally about sustainability. They will only use product that uses recycled cotton because being conscious about the environment. So now ESG is a huge topic. So as marketers, regardless of what you're in, but especially in apparel where you know clothing is considered one of the biggest uh, you know pollutants in the world because if you take circularity, uh, the clothing industry has a lot to lot to do in that scope. So the, the, the Gen Z, the new consumer looks for sustainable partners, sustainable supply chain. Are you using recycled cotton? Where do you supply? Are the people that you now in Sri Lanka, for example, they will want to know in the communities we manufacture, what is the conditions they work in? How compliant are they? Uh, are you teaching them financial 
and uh, you know self management things like that so it's uh, it's it's on so many different fronts one last thing is they want to know uh, are your factories working towards net zero what is your carbon footprint so these are all new things we need to learn and and develop so engagement is across many platforms and no now it's not it's not one guy calling the shots or one lady saying this is what you want to do you have to manage multiple stakeholders yeah yeah thanks rajiv I, i think what i was really trying to uh, you know understand there is like um like because because this has been a challenge if you look at uh, i mean it is very uh, proud uh, it, it's really um, special to hear from you that the us largest us retailers 70 80% of their supplies coming from few sri lankan companies so which means the sri lankan companies have something really special in terms of capacity capability whatever you you listed down some elements now what what do we i mean what does the rest of the sri lankan companies need to do if we have it in within us uh, how can we put together and what are these those early steps uh, the likes of brandix have taken uh, in organizing these resources uh, that sri lanka is actually having uh, you spoke about literacy rate and around that there are features we can offer to the clients such as the communication uh, you know innovation creativity etc so how do you th- what's your advice to the rest of the companies uh, to become more relevant how can we actually organize the uh, ourselves to try and uh, build on these strengths that sri lanka has yeah look i mean you if you have to be innovative you have to be entrepreneurial i think if you take you know a journey as a marketer whether you have got that accreditation as a marketer here or wherever in the world uh, and look we uh, when you are employing someone my view is there is a responsibility on on the employee and the employer both to look at creating opportunities so that means exposure so early on going looking for creating an opportunity where you think i can learn something and build my skill set to say as a marketer where am i really you know how do i resonate what i think is my skill set with where there is a gap whether it's with my client or within my business where i can build my own brand right so you have to first know and build your own brand and then with that hone and develop your skill set to then say how do i work within that organization to create value uh, building your brand means if you can consistently innovate have that entrepreneurial mindset i talked a lot about digital i mean digital plays a, is playing a big part in our role if you take today in our organization people that can give you data and give you the analytics decision making has to be faster because we live in a world of immediacy right uh, if you say especially in, in a time like this right i mean look what happened to uh, startups in sri lanka that were giving food service right i always think i'd love to be supporting like you know there are small shops which not too many people have heard of but where we got a, a favorite kind of a kottu it could be a sandwich whatever uh, that's right partnering them to figure out how do they integrate in this whole supply chain so the idea is that no matter what you are in you have to go and chase that exposure and create that opportunity to learn something new because that's when you can create if you create value the organization creates value and and so on and so forth so that's personally how how, how i see it for uh, all, all of us in the marketing fraternity so i think uh, what you're really trying to say there is the, the fraternity especially the marketers have a, a significant role to play in getting the organizations to really get this uh, put their best foot forward in terms of getting these initiatives we have what it takes but it's a matter of uh, packaging it together in a way that we could pitch it to a client who would really that start seeing that value in us yeah um yeah so so great uh, stuff rajiv i one one thing you mentioned also uh, which i really wanted to understand uh, going into it is about you you were talking about the the um, the differentiation between sales and marketing uh, you also spoke about uh, how mckinsey uh, was uh, in fact one of the articles they're talking about see a lot of organizations do not still clearly get or understand the role of marketing uh, is always the role of sales 
Um, now, I mean, is, is it a real issue out there? I mean, how do you see uh, this? I mean, are we not really, uh, like as marketers, aren't we really not doing our job right? Uh, should we take a more uh, active and involved or a role in terms of really driving the organization forward? What's your view? How do you see in general uh, this is uh, happening in Sri, in Sri Lanka? No, I mean, look, ideally that if you if you are in sort of FMCG, uh, whether you're here or abroad, and I mean, just studying, for example, you know, uh, sometimes you take something like a basic item that you might be buying off the shelf at a supermarket. Um, are you really pushing that product or are you really ensuring that that it's marketed to now? The way I understand it today, and this keeps changing because of the transformation happening in a in the this what I call world of immediacy, where we we see, we buy, we need, we get, right? So sales should give you insights, create opportunities, uh, create new avenues and channels. Marketing, right, puts the process, the strategy, looks at investing dollars into enhancing profitability on existing product lines now we evolve product lines but if you take if you take in sri lanka uh, as opposed to maybe some other parts of the world uh, how you are marketed to versus that marketing that you might want you'll always continue to see a little bit of a gap is it what i need or uh, have i have i been sold on on something now that if you take the west more often than not, you'll find and they, the studies show that this what they call impulsive buy. The impulsive buy uh, is generally about 20% of someone's general purchasing uh, pattern. So whether it's clothing or you go and see something, how it's packaged. Now, packaging has a huge role to play, right? Whether it's in, in any type of product we do. So I think that it's a it's a it's a collaboration and an integration of both, but sales is inside. It's it's collecting data, it's creating opportunities, it's investing in, in knowledge, but marketing is, is the framework that will help you understand whether you can actually sustainably continue to operate in those markets or in those channels. Um, I don't, I mean, I'm not very familiar with what the syllabus is now, uh, but I think syllabus aside, exposure. Now we, you know, if you take, companies that sell um, um, plastic chairs. Now we know Phoenix, which is also a subsidiary of Randix. They also have recently look, transformed the organization to say, you know, like for example, in our culture, how we uh, go about managing things in our kitchen or in our pantry or how we manage our laundry. Understanding that gives you a much better view of how you will uh, transform the product design itself. So. That's marketing, right? Thinking how do you sales is make converting that to a revenue aspiration. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're spot on, uh, Rajiv. You said, said that because I, I think uh, all of the marketers who, who's watching us today and, and listening to us would really acknowledge the fact that marketing is about really bringing the, the consumer centricity in everything what we do. Um, this marketing orientation, you know, marketing is is no more a, a function or a department. It should not be limited to a function or a department. Uh, ideally, marketing should be a philosophy in which the organization is managed upon. So where uh, the whole idea is bringing the consumer, uh, you know, to the, to the center of every decision that we make. Um, literally uh, thinking of the consumer when we're designing a product, thinking of the consumer when we're putting down a process uh, and, and see how that is going to play up to the consumer. And, and it's interesting when you mentioned, you you, you spoke about uh, Brandix being B2B, but now you're also shifting that concept okay. and, and going beyond this whole limitation of uh, saying B2B, but rather you want to go down maybe a couple of notches higher and get more close to the consumer and understand. And uh, where you, you kind of highlighted the importance of analytics uh, data uh, playing in this role. Uh, now, um, you know, how do you uh, really, you know, what I just wanted to ask is that you, um, when you look at the insights, 
um, now how what type of a collaboration you have because you know your your uh, primary engagement is mostly with with customer and sometimes these customers are not very open uh, we had these have a notion saying that not they are not open to really uh, collaborate and share the details down to the consumer level uh, I mean, is it is it a fact uh, or is it a myth that really uh, have have we come out of this? Now people are very open, they're collaborative. Uh, how do you see that? I mean, is, is that an opportunity that Sri Lankan companies can actually tap into? Um, yeah, look, quite, like I said, I mean, 30 years ago, the customer gave you a tech pack, what we call a spec sheet and said you just produce to that, right? So we have gone right. from that to today, actually developing the product. Uh, right. uh, uh, building the material that will build that product. So you have you have gone up this value chain from being at the low. Let's call it we were just a factory producing. Now you right. have evolved the value chain to uh, do the product planning. We are doing the product design, right? We have people sitting in the customer office trying to uh, integrate their demand planning with our product planning and say, OK, I need this. I don't need this. We have got visibility to them in terms of understanding where their inventory sits in the supply chain. But um, look, I would say some are more open than others. The ones that are open and saying, look, this is selling, not selling and have an integrated model are doing better because they are sitting with less overstock because they have shared what that uh, ideal inventory model should be right and then when it's not sensitive conversation that someone's uh, you know not losing their job but we are, we are trying to create value for you uh, the conversation is more intelligent and then the solution is more relevant uh, Harus. that's how we have seen it in the last absolute four five years so i mean rajiv in the interest of the rest of the listeners and and i think most of these companies today like uh, you don't have to be big corporates Everybody has an opportunity to tap into the international market. And uh, when we are talking about uh, volatile business environment, especially in, in the Sri Lankan context, now people have this notion and a lot of marketers have this notion. Well, analytics, data, it's all very expensive. It's an expensive affair. I mean, would you agree with it? And or is it something that actually anyone can get into and try to start off with a very um, you know, initially they can even start with a very small thing, but rather than, you know, just, you know, pushing it away. Uh, yeah. it, it, what's your view on that? I mean, is it really an issue? Is there a challenge in getting these data analytics and is there a big investment needed to get that through? Yeah, it depends. Look, look I mean, large organizations, depending on your end to end, you know, the value you are trying to create, it might be a lot of stuff, but if you take most Sri Lankan companies with the whatever industry you're in, there is so much data. We will put it into different formats and we will keep it, but whether you use it. Now, if you just Google the difference between digitization and digitalization, digitalization will create value within your process where you're taking something that is done manually and you're looking at, you know, actually creating a digital model or managing that digitization. Uh, of something could be look at your paper trail, look at how much data that you will be keeping for a management discussion. Do you really need it? So what is relevant is only between what is your client servicing front end, right? And your operations and commercial back end to see how do you integrate that? Because that's the the real uh, meat that you need. And I don't think uh, it's expensive. And today in the past you had to use expensive ERPs today. You can use open source software if you're a small business and and still build out that model. And Sri Lanka, by the way, has brilliant uh, organizations uh, that can support us to do that. On the IT infrastructure. Yeah, brilliant. I think it's a good thought there, uh, Rajiv. Thanks for shedding light on that. I think digitalization and digitization uh, for you people or the marketers who's listening in better try and get some understanding and see how you really use this concept because uh, data is is information and data and in is today's is, is a real valuable thing uh, anymore uh, because it's not the asset it's not it's not what you really have it's about how do you make sense and meaning out of data so uh, those organizations who have not really got uh, an active step into it is something that we should really think about. Um, Rajiv, I, I'm going to go into something that you did uh, talk about uh, in your previous uh, response to me. In one of the um, in one of the interviews, 
Uh, I'm just quoting from from one of your uh, publication in Echelon that you have said clothing has to be simple, comfortable and aesthetically appealing. The manufacturing must have minimal impact on the environment. Uh, I mean, you kind of touch the minimal impact to the environment. Uh, is minimalistic approach, is it, is it something people are, are really worried about now? And are they, is there a value proposition for us to add as a Sri Lankan company um, driving this agenda of uh, whether you call it, uh, what's your carbon footprint um, being a net zero uh, or being, uh, you know, environmental friendly? Um, what is why? Uh, what is Sri Lanka's position in terms of offering uh, these um, elements on, on minimal impact to the environment? How are we positioned uh, in, in offering this value proposition to the global clients? No, I think it's it's part of the uh, of a journey, right? Uh, but if you take if you take how well we have looked after employees in our industry, how compliant right. I would say in Sri Lanka. Uh, most of the the most of the industry ha are extremely responsible. Have taken compliance at the highest level. Take uh, empowerment uh, and the well-being of our employees very very seriously. Um, and also, if you look at our uh, impact, let's say both on environment or on the social side, uh, there was a lot of you know sometimes a lot of noise. But when you looked at the fact. When most come, whether it was the IFC or when uh, global organizations did audit, they found Sri Lanka to be extremely compliant. Uh, there is even a tripartite agree agreement between how uh, our associates, the unions, the companies work together for a better future for everybody. Um, you see, we we had the we have complete like totally you know. Uh, sustainable manufacturing facilities, one that are on those journeys. We have one, I mean, as a company, we give back almost eight megawatts of power through our solar uh, plants as well. But it's right. very real because most consumer brands now, if you go and look at uh, a lot of the brands now, they can, they have offered transparency to know where your goods are also coming from, right? right. So, so of course, when there is uh, protests or things happening on the streets and when we are in the news for all the wrong reasons, they get they call you and get worried, but they know and they always stand by the fact that they they will tell their consumers and their partners that Sri Lanka is is a great place to buy uh, because people put compliance at, at the forefront. So I think that authenticity is going to be more real now. You can't just put it on your website. You have to have data. They'll ask you what's your carbon footprint, what's your food waste, right? Uh, what is at where are you in, for example, the HIG index? Uh, to see your compliance. So uh, all of this will be, like you said earlier, with transparency in the value chain, people will have access to all of that data. Uh, and we are ready for it. Yeah, so I think that's that's good news. I mean, Sri Lanka has already built a reputation of being a, a compliant, a more sustainable source uh, of uh, for apparel or maybe even for any other. I think uh, this has been also uh, thanks to the likes of Dilma, they built this whole uh, ethical tea. You know, Mr. Meryl J. Fernando has done a great deal of work there. So I think we we have building as a as a destination. Sri Lanka globally is known to uh, be more compliant as as and and more more um, focused on this sustainability agenda. So maybe if uh, the local market is is another area really to build. Uh, momentum in this space is another message that's coming clearly out of Rajiv. Uh, Rajiv, I have a few questions coming through from the listeners. Uh, I'll, I'll text uh, with uh, start off with one with uh, which is coming from Rushani Leuke Bandara. Uh, she's asking uh, what are the strategies recommended to follow in training staff, especially sales and marketing staff to face the challenges in this volatile business environment and and crisis and, and and also how to keep their mindset uh, with aligned organizations goals. Um, so what are your uh, recommendations on this Rajiv? So I think no, she has two questions here. How do you really uh, what strategies you recommend to train staff, uh, especially sales and marketing and also how can you keep them uh, aligned to the organization goals? 
No, I think look, first of all, you have to understand what does success look like for the team, that team together, right? right? Because most often people think I have a functional goal and if I do my goal, that supports the organization goal. First thing is to understand what is shared success. And if, if you understand what is a metric or what is a KPI, we, we, we don't like KPI, but if you say what is, what does success look like for the whole team? Now, right. when you look at that, we use a model where you look at what, what is the direction, alignment and commitment of everybody together. Then right. you understand whether it's a matter of a team working together, it's a misalignment in of what this shared success looks like, right? And then most importantly, you have to understand within that group, do you have this what we call fixed or a growth mindset? Now, today, today if we had a fixed mindset as an apparel industry in Sri Lanka, we would say yeah. life is bad. This is ideally not the government we want in power. We can't find, we can't, we, we are in queues all day. Our people have no way to come. But we have to keep reinventing ourselves, but always staying true to what that shared success looks like and the most important thing is one is exposure i believe that whether your sales marketing operations commercial exposure across the entire value chain of the organization will give significant appreciation of what work each person does then you appreciate Absolutely. how much you support each other and that shared success is more easily understood and then in summary Fixed versus growth mindset. I think it's a it's a great book, Carol Dweck's book. I'm sure most of you might have read it, uh, and there are many updated versions of it, which I'm sure would be useful. Yeah, thanks, Rajiv. I think that that would shed some light. I hope uh, your question was answered. Um, um, maybe at least some indicative uh, direction in terms of how this could be approached. Um, there's another interesting question, Rajiv. Uh, coming from one of our listeners is um, uh, what are the competitive advantage Sri Lanka create over uh, global competition? Uh, what are those unique uh, edge we have? So many. I think the first one is this entrepreneurial mindset, right? Because what we found is if we are compared with a company and what I mean is now we are Sri Lanka centric, but we supply from different locations, right? So we are a Sri Lankan company with a global presence, but as a Sri Lankan company, what we've learned to do is be, you know, listen to understand what that consumer pain point is. Uh, look, today, if you look at how we, how our teams can do TikToks, memes, so many things, even in the toughest of times, you can understand our, our brains work in very creative ways and that creativity has to be channeled also to understand how do we create a solution to our customer? So the advantage is, like I said, high literacy, uh, driven to try to be different by creating a solution, entrepreneurial mindset, uh, always not, you know, now most of our competitors, which are in other countries, they, they are winning on automation, right? They are winning on automation. They are winning because uh, they have, they are driving productivity, they are driving automation and that advantage we, we have not got here, but we are winning through very, very careful and intelligent client management, uh, uh, creating models that ultimately create value to them um, and also being where they are. And they know that we are willing to uh, compromise where we won't be hard nosed to say, no, if this is what we will produce you by. So I think that, that compromise, uh, collaboration mindset, being innovative and entrepreneurial uh, really shows in how we work with uh, our partners. Yeah, thanks a lot, Rajiv. I think definitely um, uh, it's a list that really every Sri Lankan company or a marketer would like to uh, pay attention to. And we have all this, um, you know, uh, and we should be able to really work on it and capitalize. Uh, one other question. Uh, what strategies to implement to take the apparel industry from um, uh, 10 billion dollar to 20 billion is it possible in the next five to ten years is a question to you well look i think getting to 10 should i think look if sri lanka can remain competitive for different reasons it could be it will it will depend on 
uh, monetary policy, how quickly we can manage uh, to be sustainable as a country, because remember, there has to be affordability for uh, uh, op uh, manufacturing operations in the country. So it's a hard to say now, but I think do we have the mindset and capacity to get to 8 to 10 billion? I believe so. Uh, there will be an adjustment because there will be probably is a global recession that we are going to be facing in the short term. But I think certainly uh, two ways. One is what, what, how much can we uh, scale in our supply chain? We will need, you can't afford to be bringing materials from the Far East, paying high prices and waiting 45 days for a ship to come into the country. So building verticality in the country, even though it's an island nation, uh, we have to, but we could leverage uh, supply chains in the region. For example, we could be importing uh, fabrics from India and, and, and doing that value addition and manufacturing here. So that will support it. Secondly, like I said, if you don't want to be in commodity product where the customer and the consumer is looking for cheap, cheap, cheap. If you can be in value added products, you will anyway be getting a higher purchase price. So you'll be gaining 50, 20% on today's price. So there is an opportunity. Brilliant. I think that definitely is very promising. I think it's very important that the, uh, the fact that you mentioned uh, about Sri Lanka's dependency on Far East nations uh, on raw material because we don't have a, a fully supported uh, support industries around even the primary industries, Rajiv. And this is going to be a great challenge. So I think your advice there is to try to look for creating support industries as much as possible within the country. If not, at least try and have partnerships of explore the opportunity for regional sourcing it is ideally what we should really focus. So some uh, real good insights there to all those marketers who's, who's listening in. Uh, to wrap up, Rajiv, I'm, I'm, there are so many a uh, few more questions I had in my list. But uh, I think we, we just need to uh, see closure to this. And I would lay just the last question uh, for the day is like, what qualities does a marketer sh should have or, or what quality should a marketer possess to navigate through these tough, challenging times? Uh, what are your views, Rajiv, on that? No, I think first of all, it's we always say stay, you know, humble, hungry, and always think of a ways to create. It could be something that when we say hungry, it means just keep thinking of innovating within yourself, what ideas that you can bring. And look, it doesn't, sometimes the best ideas won't come from thinking about, uh, about the business you're in or what you're doing. Uh, it can come from, from many different forms. Uh, so like I said, you know, that energy is important, right? We can't allow ourselves to be deflated and generally, Marketing is the spark that every business looks to to try and inspire uh, or create a new opportunity. So I think continue to inspire yourself through reading and understanding some good success stories. I think the success stories that have happened for digital small business startups in the pandemic uh, are better than some of the success stories that we would have read from the 80s and 90s. So there has been probably 10, 15 better success stories in the in the last uh, a couple of years, right? Uh, how sustainable they will be depends over time. Uh, but like the theme said, being resilient, continue to inspire, be innovative. Uh, and also, I think the most important thing is build your network. And that network means whether it's not only just other marketers, don't sit. I mean, we all have a, a social uh, groups and friendships but build your network across people that are not like you, uh, but that can teach you and guide you to learn something you don't know. I think uh, for us, that for me and my colleagues, that's a learning we get every day. Make yourself think, a little uh, uncomfortable, I would say. That's that's the best thing we could do. So that's, that's a very, very strong point you're leaving with us today. Network is net worth. Uh, so thank you, uh, Rajiv. Uh, for that uh, excellent conversation and, and really shedding light to some very important aspects of how do we really as marketers, how do we look at the aspect of uh, strategic marketing and through strategic marketing, how do we bring about resilience? And that's the only way forward in facing with this volatile business environment, be it in Sri Lanka or be it elsewhere. 
I think uh, in future it's we are living in a VUCA world and it's more and more going to be this volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous. So I think the best way forward is to gear ourselves up towards that and, and really become positive uh, attitude people who, who take things positively. We have a lot, like you said, we have um, creativity with us, we have innovation with us, we have a literacy rate with us. So it's just a matter of how do we leverage all this together in a more strategic sense. Uh, so some really good uh, conversational points to ponder upon. Uh, thank you very much once again uh, for your time, for your valuable insight shared. I also uh, like to uh, mention that this is an experience sharing forum that was organized by the SLIM membership team towards this membership. As always, the Institute is looking forward to bring in values, insights, information and knowledge to keep you uh, gaining that momentum. A big thank you goes out to the President, Council and the Executive Com uh, Committee of Sri Lanka Institute of Marketing and not forgetting the CEO of Sri Lanka Institute of Marketing and the staff of SLIM for bringing everything uh, and, and all these conversation together. Thank you once again. Don't forget to join us on our next session. Look out for the next program agenda. Look out for uh, the date and the time. Uh, until then, we wish you a very uh, pleasant evening and thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Rajiv, once again. Thank you and good night. Wish you all the best. Thank you very much. All the best.